Hey, what's up, everybody? I want to welcome you to my channel. I'm Carlin Felder with the Living in the Hudson Valley YouTube channel. And today I want to share a map style video where I show you the Hudson Valley so you can get a better idea of where it's located a little and get to know a little bit about some of the towns in the Hudson Valley. Um, so that if you're interested in relocating to the Hudson Valley, this gives you an idea about where some of the things are. So the first thing I want to talk about is where it's located, some of the most popular towns, what's, what makes the Hudson Valley unique, traveling around the Hudson Valley, what are the major thoroughfares, um, what's public transportation like, and also a big question that people have um, when they're from out of the area is how far is the Hudson Valley from New York City, and also how far is it from Buffalo and uh, Western New York. Another thing you might want to think about is um, whether Hudson Valley is a good place for you to move. So whether you're interested in moving in 70 or 70 days, give me a call. I'm a real estate agent in the Hudson Valley. I happen to live in Beacon and I love it here. And I've been helping buyers and sellers move to the Hudson Valley for many years now. And I would love to give you um, the insight that you need to make a move. So you can count on me when you're ready to move. Just feel free to call me or reach out to me via one of the contact points in my description below the video. So here we go. So I'm gonna pop into Google Earth um, and I want to type in uh, Beacon, New York. That happens to be where I live and it's a pretty good place to start. It's in the mid Hudson Valley region, um, which is uh, probably, it's about an hour and a half by train north of New York City. So you can see on this map, um, which is Google Earth, New York City is right around here. You got Manhattan right here and Westchester. And as we move up the Hudson River, you got Yonkers, Scarsdale, Terrytown, Ossining, Peekskill, Cortland, West Point, Cold Spring, and here is Beacon, New York. That's where I live. And Beacon is a really awesome town. And this region is called the Mid-Hudson region. You go further up the Hudson Valley, you have um, Waffingers, Crown Heights, which is not a really big area, Poughkeepsie, Highland, New Paltz, Hyde Park, where the Culinary Institute is located, Rhinebeck, and it looks like it's pretty far away, but actually Hyde Park to Rhinebeck is about 15 or 20 minutes, not that far. On the other side of the river, you have, like I said, New Paltz is over here, um, Kingston is right here across from Rhinebeck, Red Hook, where uh, Bard College is located, Tivoli, Bryce Marden, who's an artist, lives lived in Tivoli, uh, just passed away recently. He's one of the most influential artists of the last century. Sagerties, Germantown, a great little town, Catskill, and Hudson, New York. And then as you go further north, you have Albany. So basically the Hudson Valley region covers the area starting just north of New York City through Westchester County, Putnam County, all the way up to the capital region, which is right here um, where Albany is located. The Hudson Valley is basically um, the area that are the counties surrounding the Hudson River. So you can see the Hudson River runs right through the middle there. And you have um, Westchester, Putnam, uh, Duchess over here, you have Rockland and Orange County and Ulster County. And then you have the counties north of that um, in the Hudson Valley region. So let's just pop over here to this quick map. Like I said, you have Westchester, Rockland in the south, just um, including Yonkers. You have Orange and Putnam, Duchess and Ulster, then Green, Columbia, Rensselaer and Albany. So the Hudson Valley goes pretty far up the river. And coming back over here, you can see on Google Earth, that next to um, Westchester, Putnam and Dutchess, you have Connecticut. So you have uh, Danbury, Connecticut here, which is a really great place to be uh, if you wanna go to a Trader Joe's because it's one of the closest Trader Joe's to where I live over in Beacon. Um, you just take I-84 from Beacon, which kind of wind, winds down and around over to Danbury. And as soon as you cross the border into Connecticut, there is a Trader Joe's. It's about 35 minutes from where I live here in Beacon. And then uh, again, as we go up the counties, um, you got Duchess all the way up through here. Duchess goes pretty far up, as you can see on the map. Uh, you got Duchess going way up past Saugerties, actually. It kind of cuts off on the east side of the river between Saugerties and Catskill. 
So um, where's that Catskill and Sawgrace over here? And then you have, this is the Southern corner of Massachusetts. So the Hudson Valley runs alongside Massachusetts and actually Rensselaer County actually ends around here somewhere. And this is a Southern, Southern uh, West, Southwest corner of Vermont where the Green Mountains are located. So it's a pretty cool area. It's really large. So it's surprisingly large. Uh, it covers a lot of area. So if you're thinking about moving, if you've like Googled uh, moving to the Hudson Valley, you'd be surprised at actually how large it is. So you really need to do some research and kind of hone in on where you want to live because you could be looking in an area from New York City all the way up to Albany, um, east and west from the Catskills all the way over, all the way over to uh, the Berkshire Mountains and the Green Mountains, uh, I'm sorry, yeah, the Green Mountain National Forest over here, um, which is, it's pretty big, it's pretty expansive area. So some of the things I want to talk about. Let's uh, jump into some of the towns in the Hudson Valley. So some of the towns in the Hudson Valley, like I mentioned, you know, if you're leaving New York City and you want to be closer to New York City um, and you don't want to be so far away, so far north up by, by um, uh, Albany, then you would start looking a little further down in the Hudson Valley. And it's, it's the lower Hudson Valley, low HUD, like Terrytown or um, Ossining, across the river, you might start looking at, um, you know, Stone Haverstraw, um, some of the other places along there, like Nyack, um, which is right here, Sleepy Hollow and Terrytown are over here. And Ossining is a great place. It's got a lot of uh, good, good houses there. I mean, everything is great. I mean, I can't say that anywhere in the Hudson Valley is a bad place to live. They're all really wonderful. It just depends on what you're looking for. So Peekskill is a really cool town. They have something called the Peekskill Brewery. I like the Peekskill beers a lot. They're really good. And as you go up, you've got like um, the Bear Mountain State Park, which actually is closed right now because we had some really bad flooding a few, like about a month ago. But if you're coming up um, from the city on the east side of the river, some of the towns you're gonna go through are Croton, Peekskill, and you'll go through this little section area here where there's not a lot of population density, but there's a lot of really great state park area, a lot of hiking going on there, um, up to Cold Spring. And then what you can't see is the little, the little town of Gar Garrison is right along here. There's a train stop right along there. On the east side, on the west side of the river, you've got West Point, Highland Falls, Fort Montgomery. Like I said, Bear Mountain State Park is over there. Um, and then if you go a little bit further out to the west, you have Harriman State Park, which is a really neat place. And a little bit further south and a little bit further west, you have Tuxedo Park and Warwick, which are over here, uh, right there, which are really a little bit further out. I would say not exactly Hudson, Hudson Valley, but definitely like if you're considering being right along the river, main Hudson Valley, then um, yeah, Warwick is a little bit further away. But Warwick is a really cute town. It's got a lot of, uh, neat shops and it has some really cool uh, historical features to it. And over here in Washingtonville, you have something called Brothers Winery, which is kind of cool. It's one of the oldest wineries in the United States, if not the oldest winery in the United States. So anyway, so back to the parks. So, I mean, back to the city. So if you're going up the Hudson River, like I said, you get to um, Cold Spring, a beautiful town. It's a great little main street. A lot of people end up in Cold Spring on the weekends from Manhattan because you can take the train up. As you can see, the train the train line. Let me see. Let this get this a little bit resolved here. But the train line comes straight up along the Hudson River. So when you're coming up from Manhattan and you want to visit the Hudson Valley, the train line runs all the way along the Hudson River, and it's absolutely incredibly gorgeous. So, so a lot of people come up and go hiking. They get off in Cold Spring, get off the train, and they go hiking all over Hudson Highland State Park. It's kind of a neat place. Um, and the main street is really, it's only like about three quarters of a mile, eh, not even that much, probably about a half a mile long. Um, so people park and go to the shops and stuff in, in Cold Spring. So let me see if I can get to a street view here. Oops, whoops. And now I'm a beacon. Uh, so back to Cold Spring. Cold Spring, let me see, street view. Let's do this. So forgive me, I'm a little uh, bit of a newbie at doing these. 
these map overviews with Google Earth. It's a new thing I'm trying out to try to give people <clears throat> a little bit of an overview of what it looks like to be I'm going to take you to an empty building. So anyway, this is Main Street in Cold Spring. It's pretty cute. It's got a lot of shops. It, this was obviously a day where there were not a lot of people out. But some of my favorite restaurants are here. Hudson Hills is awesome. You have the Cold Spring Coffee House down here. You have a great cheese shop. You know, a lot of people just come shopping at these bookstores and antique stores. And like I said, they go hiking in the area. So you got a lot of people going hiking around here. And it's a pretty, it's a pretty neat, pretty neat thing. So let's go back. Let's go back out here. And I'm gonna take you up to Beacon, which is where I live. And Beacon is a pretty awesome place. It has a really long main street. Um, the home prices in Beacon are averaging around $575,000 right now. The difference between Beacon and Cold Spring is probably about $100,000 difference in the average home price. One of the things that people love about Beacon is coming up to the museum called Dia Beacon. People love to come up and go hiking on top of Mount Beacon. There's a really neat, um, you can park here. And you can hike straight up Mount Beacon. It's got a great lookout tower, so it's pretty cool. Uh, Beacon is also across the river from Newburgh, which is a really um, up and coming town in the area. They have some really beautiful brownstones. And it's, um, an up, like I said, an up and coming area. New Windsor is also a great place if you're looking to move to the Hudson Valley. And Cornwall is also a really neat place in Cornwall, Cornwall, Cornwall and Hudson. They're really neat areas. They have really neat downtowns. And like I said, you have a lot of state parks. Another thing people like to come up and see, um, actually, and you can see it when you're on the New York State Thruway, is the Storm King Art Center. It's a huge outdoor sculptural park. So it's a huge draw. And overall, the industry in the Hudson Valley is, is tourism. I mean, it's a big part of it. Another big part of um, <clears throat> the Hudson Valley um, industry is also technology. It's like a technology corridor. Uh, some people are calling it. That's kind of cool. But there are also a lot of universities here. So um, anyway, back to Beacon. So Beacon kind of is just this condensed little area here across from Newburgh. You've got a bridge, the Newburgh Beacon Bridge here. As you go up the Hudson River, the, the train goes all the way up from Grand Central to Poughkeepsie. So you can hop on a train down in New York City, come all the way up. <laughs> on the other side of the river, the buses are great. There are some trains that will take you up from the city. The, there's a train line that comes all the way up out this way too. I haven't personally taken it, so I don't know a lot about it, but there are people who take it. And also if you're coming up from the city and you're going to come up and you live on the, the eastern side of the Hudson Valley on the border next to Connecticut, there's a train. there are a couple of train lines out there that come up from Manhattan, so that's easy to get to. And also, if you want to go all the way up to Connecticut, there's trains coming out of Connecticut. I mean, out of Grand Central going all the way up through Connecticut, all the way up over to um, to Rhode Island and up to Boston, which is right over here. So one of the things I love about living in the Hudson Valley is the proximity pretty much to everything. Like I can leave Beacon, drive over to Providence, Rhode Island and hang out or Newport, Rhode Island, actually hang out for a few hours and turn around and come home. It's about a three hour drive. I mean, it is a long day to do that, but the proximity to so many things in this area is really one of the features of the Hudson Valley that I love the most. So anyway, back to some of the towns. So like I said, you get off the train in Poughkeepsie. Um, if you live over in New Paltz, you want to take the train down to Manhattan. You could just drive over and park your car. It's about a 20 minute drive, not too far. Um, Hyde Park is up here and the Culinary Institute is in Hyde Park. There's also some really great um, historical homes on the Hudson River. Um, Franklin Roosevelt lived up here and Eleanor Roosevelt. So you have a lot of history from them and the Vanderbilts as well. They have some historic homes there. Across the river um, in New Paltz, you'll have the, Mo uh, next to New, New Paltz, you'll have the Mohonk Preserve. You also have the Gunks, which is this very, very, very beautiful range of uh, a beautiful ridge. And when you're over here in New Paltz, it's absolutely stunning. Stunning to see And when you're in the New Paltz area. 
Um, uh, a little bit slow on the resolution here, but this is the New Paltz area. You can see it's fairly densely populated. It's a small town, like all the other towns in the area, they are small, but it's really pretty because you can park and go walking along the Walco River. You can ride your bike. You can ride your bike all the way over to, to Poughkeepsie actually, and you can um, do the walkway over the Hudson, which you can ride your bike all the way from New Paltz over the walkway over the Hudson. It's really cool and it'll take you to a really neat rail trail in Dutchess County that covers a lot of uh, the area in Dutchess County. One thing I like about Poughkeepsie is it has a golf course in town. It's, or it has some parks and golf courses and it's actually really pretty. This back and kill area um, of Poughkeepsie is really, really a neat area. If you work at Vassar or you work at IBM, those are great places to look. For buying a house. Uh, Spratt Park is a really neat area. I was over there the other day driving through. Here's this back and kill area. You have some great neighborhoods here um, with a lot of really pretty houses. And I did take some video of that. And you can see as you're looking, you know, just kind of the population density. The city of Poughkeepsie is a lot more dense. Arlington, do your due diligence. Look at the areas that you might want to live as far as what the um, school districts are like. And make sure that you're finding a place that makes sense to you for your kids. You know, if you want to put them in private school or public school, you know, just look around and see what uh, the best thing for your specific needs would be. The Red Oaks Mill area of Poughkeepsie is also a really great area. Um, but I, I do think all of the areas are great. I mean, I think the city of Poughkeepsie, you know, when you're downtown in the city of Poughkeepsie, there are some gorgeous homes. There's some beautiful old uh, Victorian style homes. They're absolutely stunning. It's a wonderful place to live. You got restaurants in, in the city of Poughkeepsie. You have a lot of, uh, you're close to the waterfront, close to the walkway over the Hudson. So I think Poughkeepsie is a really great place to live. So, and you can see like there's Marist College, Vassar College, there's Dutchess County Community College, the Culinary Institute of America is close by. Um, but as you look, you know, you look here, you can see between here and Connecticut, which is over there, you really don't have a lot of population density. I mean, the main population density in the area in the Hudson Valley is the, is the region from Poughkeepsie all the way down to Beacon. And some of these areas are like a little bit more densely populated. Like this is downtown in Wappingers Falls. This is the village of Wappingers Falls. But Wappingers Falls covers kind of a broader area. And then you got like Fishkill, which is um, right here. And you've got some new townhome communities over here and condos and stuff like that. So anyway, that's where I live. So I'm talking about it obviously more. Um, new Paltz is really cool. Gardner is a really neat area. Modena, all these areas there, you can see on the map, there's a lot of farming going on. Then you have little clusters of um, pockets of population density, but there's really not, it's not that populated. It's actually pretty sparse. You know, it does look, pretty green overall when you look at the map in general. I mean, put a map of Dallas, Texas up versus a map of this area and you'd be pretty shocked at the, at the population density. Um, if you're thinking of moving up and you want to be a little bit further away from New York City and you're wondering where all the people from Brooklyn are going, well, people from Brooklyn are going everywhere, but a lot of people are migrating to Kingston. Kingston has a really, um, a bigger, about 30,000 people. It's on the river. It has a lot of neat shops. It has a two very distinct areas, the stockade area and the Rondo area, which is down by the water. Um, there's uh, a lot of really neat stuff going on in Kingston. I think it's a pretty diverse area as well. Homes are a little bit less expensive than if you're down in Poughkeepsie in Dutchess County or Beacon for sure. Homes are more affordable. If you were to go across the river on uh, the bridge here, and end up in Rhinebeck. Rhinebeck is a really neat town. The homes are generally like seven, eight hundred thousand dollars, so they're more expensive. But if you want to live outside of Rhinebeck, a little bit further over to the east, you might be able to get a nice house for four, four hundred thousand, five hundred thousand dollars. You know, it'd take you ten or fifteen minutes, ten minutes to drive into Rhinebeck. But if you want to be on this side of the river, um, it might be a good option for you. And there are actually uh, train line. The train line does go up. A little bit further on up this side of the river so you can actually catch the train instead of going down to Poughkeepsie you can catch the train over in, in these towns over here and take the train into Manhattan. Red Hook 
is a little town that's got Bard Bard College. So it's another little college town. And then you got a lot of these little like uh, towns up as you keep going up, the little towns that are cute, like Tivoli's got a really cute downtown area. Socrates is pretty neat. Um, and Germantown is a little town that's got, I've stayed in an Airbnb at a, year, a yurt, Airbnb there a few years ago before I lived in the Hudson Valley. I like it a lot. It's a really neat place. Catskill, you're going up and to Hudson. And then you go further north and you get into the capital region and to Albany, Albany. So, all right. So I've covered a lot, I've covered a lot of the different cities. I've covered, you know, the, the towns um, and where the Hudson Valley is located. If you want to be in a more densely populated area, if your budget is really not an issue, you know, if, if buying something for five, six, seven hundred, eight hundred thousand dollars is is easily in your price point, then look at the lower Hudson region. If you're commuting down to northern New Jersey, look at the lower Hudson area. If you're commuting into Manhattan, you know, look at some of the lower Hudson areas like look at Rockland, Westchester and southern Putnam. If you're if you're not too concerned about how far you have to drive. If you have to just drive down to Westchester for work, then start looking at the mid Hudson region. I think that's a good area. You know, if you, if you start, if you have to commute from Peekskill to Poughkeepsie, that's going to be quite a drive, especially in winter. It's going to, it's going to be pretty, pretty intense, but um, I wouldn't necessarily do it myself, but there are some people who do that. Some of the major thoroughfares in the area are, like I mentioned earlier, 84, which cuts across the region and goes over to Pennsylvania, goes over to Scranton and um, Scranton and Wilkes-Barre. And then I think further down to, uh, oh, it ends about there, 84 ends about there. And then you pick up 81 and 80 over in the area. And then you have the New York State Thruway, which covers, which basically takes you all the way up to Albany and up through the Adirondacks to Canada. You know, it takes you all the way up to Canada, like I said. You'll be, you know, on the east, west side of the river, uh, west side of, um, you know, where the Hudson River ends and the uh, Lake Champlain starts. So 87 goes all the way up to Albany. It's a great highway. Not a lot of ways to get off and on the highway. Don't expect to get off and on the highway and check out a bunch of little towns because, the way they've made the throughway is that there are very few exits, so they have gas stations set up and, and uh, rest stops. So if you're wanting to look at the area, it's better not to get on the throughway because it might be 15 or 20 miles before you're able to get off and on the highway again. So you'll want to take one of the Route 9 options <laughs> or some of the other options to take you around the area. So, so anyway, um, some of the main things that are really cool features of the Hudson Valley are the, the state parks, the hiking, tons and tons of uh, orchards and farms and farmers markets, a lot of universities. Um, the nice thing about the Hudson Valley is the proximity to New York City. It's really nice. Also, if you want to go over, like I said, to um, Boston, it's like three hours away. You can go up to uh, the Berkshires in Massachusetts easily. You can also get up to Vermont, if you want to go skiing, um, you can also ski in New York. You can go skiing at Wyndham. You can go skiing just a little west of uh, Woodstock. Um, you can go to Bel Air, which I've been to quite a few times. I like Bel Air a lot. So you can see there are a lot of mountains in the area. You got the Catskill Mountains. You got the Adirondack Mountains. You got the Taconic Mountain Range. You have the Green Mountains, and you have the Berkshires um, in Massachusetts. So. Overall, if you're looking at moving to the Hudson Valley, I highly recommend um, taking a deeper dive into some of the towns. Give me a call. If you're thinking of moving here, I work with buyers and sellers all the time, people just like you looking to move to the Hudson Valley or move out of the Hudson Valley. So if you know somebody who is interested in selling their house, have, uh, have them give me a call. I'd be happy to help them. Um, let me see. Is there anything else I want to talk about? Uh, if you want to know more about home prices, give me a call. I'm uh, pretty uh, dialed into what the home prices are. You know, you have, if you want to get a house uh, at the lower end of the range right now, high threes to mid fours is pretty much an average price point for the Hudson Valley. Some of the towns are more expensive than, than the others. Like I said, Beacon is around 550 to 575. Kingston is closer to 400 for an average home price. 
Cold Spring could be in the seven or eights. Putnam County's got really high taxes. You know, it just depends on where you want to be, um, what kind of amenities that you're looking for. And, you know, what kind of commute, if you don't have to commute and you have an unlimited budget, you know, the world is your oyster. You can pretty much pick anywhere to live in the Hudson Valley and be happy. If you have to commute to the city or you are moving here specifically for a job, then, you know, we'll look at places that make sense for you. So anyway, I hope this was helpful. And, you know, before you leave, please like and subscribe. And um, uh, I really appreciate your time here and um, give me a call. I'm happy to help you accomplish your accomplish your goals when it comes to buying and selling. So thanks a lot. Really appreciate your time and look me up if you need help with anything.